Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So the title of this video is Why XRP Won't Pump on November 21st. Now, I really didn't want to make a video like this, but the amount of misinformation that I am seeing literally on my timeline on YouTube is unbearable. I'm just seeing people talking about XRP is going to be used on November 21st. Banks are going live with ISO 2022 and XRP is going to be used and five digit XRP is going to happen on November the 21st. I mean, it's wild out there, literally the amount of misinformation. It's unbelievable. It's like a circus telling people all this sort of wild information that's actually misinformation and everyone's just running with it. So I thought, you know what, if these people are spreading misinformation, then I might as well put up my video clarifying the misinformation. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to explain clearly and precisely exactly why I strongly believe XRP won't pump on November 21st, this coming Monday. And I'm going to try and present to you evidence proving what I say as well. So you know it is not me just talking and making this up, but I'm backing what I say with evidence and documents to support what I'm saying. So let's get started, shall we? So the people that are claiming XRP will pump on November 21st, this is basically their evidence. I'm going to summarize their evidence in four points. One, they say, this is their trail of thinking, yeah? So one, they say Ripple is part of ISO 20022 standard body. Two, ISO 20022 is going live by some banks on the coming weekend. Three, DTI enables token identification in the ISO 20022 messages. Four, ah, therefore, that means once the ISO 20022 payment messages is sent by banks, XRP must be used for liquidity and payments by these banks too. And that's literally their trail of thought. So they're saying because ISO 20022, Ripple is a part of it, and because we know in November, some banks are going to go live with ISO 20022, and because we know that the DTI, which is a digital token identifier, enables token identification in the ISO 20022 message, that's a feature that the ISO 20022 message is going to have. Now, putting all this together, connecting the dots, as they call it, this must mean that once the ISO 20022 payment message is sent by banks, that they must be using XRP for liquidity and payments by these banks too. And that's their proof that XRP will be pumping on November the 21st. That's literally their, their rational thinking and their logical explanation without any actual evidence except for connecting dots and joining them together with their own hands and coming to the conclusion that XRP is going to pump because of those few reasons. And I'm going to tell you why that logic is flawed. And the reason why is because firstly, ISO 20022 is just a messaging upgrade only and has nothing to do with banks implementing distributed ledger technology at all. Just because you see a bank go live with ISO 20022, that does not mean the bank is going to be using DLT systems. The messaging layer is separate from the payment layer. ISO 20022 is part of the messaging layer and it's not in any fashion or form an indication that XRP must and will be used in the payment settlement layer as these YouTube influencers are making out that ISO 20022 equals XRP utility. That's false. And now it's true, Ripple is part of the ISO 20022 standard body because they have payment software to handle messages. And since the whole entire financial world will be moving over to ISO 20022, Ripple wants to make sure they are at the forefront of it. So the payment software that Ripple has that can handle ISO 20022 messages has nothing to do with the XRPL. You need to understand that. Ripple has payment software that can handle ISO 20022 messages for banks. However, that has nothing to do with the XRPL. For example, if a bank wants to use RippleNet and the bank does not want to use ODL in RippleNet, but they want to use Ripple's other services whereby they can handle cross-border payments for that bank. That bank could send an ISO 20022 message with, with Ripple's payment software, yeah, it's messaging software, whatever, that Ripple has, and Ripple can settle the transaction 
for the banks without even using ODL because ODL is a feature that banks can choose to opt into. It's not, it's not a feature by default that because Ripple has ISO 20022 messaging software or tools that can handle ISO 20022, okay, it's not, it does not automatically mean by default that XRPL is going to be used, it's connected to XRPL or so on. And Ripple devs have explicitly come out and made this ex clear, as clear as can be said, clearly showing you that XRPL and ISO 2022 has no direct connection. Just because Ripple has software that can handle or use ISO 2022 messages, it does not have anything to do with XRPL directly. So to the people that are pushing this notion that ISO 2022 equals XRP being utilized is misinformation. And they are completely ignoring what even Ripple developers have come out and said outlining that ISO 20022 has nothing to do with XRP and they are completely ignoring that because they think they know better. I mean, who would you rather take your source of information from? Some Tom, Dick or Harry on YouTube or the XRP Ripple developer who understands this space, who builds on this, who, who's basically building on the DLT systems that we are all banking on to hopefully get wealthy from. And they are coming out and telling you, guys, ISO 2022 has nothing to do with XRP. But no, some YouTuber says otherwise, and he knows more. So I'm going to ignore the developer and what they have to say. And I'm going to believe some YouTuber because he is selling me the dream that on November the 21st, banks are going to be using XRP and it's going to go to five digits and we're all going to be very wealthy. So banks have already made it explicitly clear also that when they go live with ISO 20022, they are still going to be using correspondent banking. They've made it explicitly clear. And I have proven this already. Go and watch my series on XRP utility in relation to November and March or when ISO 20022 goes live. There is documentation after documentation and I'm, and I'm going to show you some in this video as well, proving that when ISO 20022 goes live, the banks are going to be using correspondent banking still. And all these YouTubers that are connecting the dots, how can you miss the elephant in the room when you connect the dots? You ignore that massive dot right in front of your face when it tells you banks are going to be using correspondent banking and you walk around that dot and you skip it. Because you people are not sincere. You guys are not genuine when you're doing your research. I'm beginning to think you guys, you people have an agenda now because I figured this out back in September and you people are still spewing misinformation, basic concepts that can easily be understood and you're telling people, oh, just trust me, I'll do the research for you. Unbelievable. Correspondent banking, has nothing to do with DLT systems. And I know some people out there said correspondent bank banking is basically the XRP ledger. No, correspondent banking has nothing to do with XRPL. It's not even a DLT system. Correspondent banking is what they're using today for cross-border payments, to settle payments. It is not a DLT system. Correspondent banking works by having pre-funded liquidity at the destination banks. I've already explained how correspondent banking works back in September with my, in my, very, with my very first video in this series. So ISO 20022 will work alongside correspondent banking when banks go live with ISO 20022 in November. So I'm going to quickly flick through some documents. I'm not really going to go through them. I'm just going to flick through them just to show you that ISO 20022 is going to be used with correspondent banking. And just to show you that correspondent banking uses pre-funded liquidity. So here we have swift.com. It says ISO 20022, discover why correspondent banking needs ISO 20022 now. And it tells you correspondent banking payments have been a core component of transactions banking for decades generating stable revenue from fees and currency exchange. But the landscape is changing. For banks to stay ahead of the curve and meet customer requirements, the industry needs a common standard based on richer, more structured data. So 
What does correspondent banking need ISO 20022? If ISO 20022 equals XRP utility, then it would eradicate correspondent banking and SWIFT would know that and SWIFT would not put up a page for people to download why correspondent banking needs ISO 20022 now, would it? If the whole idea is when a bank goes live with ISO 20022, they are not going to be using correspondent banking, they are going to be using on-demand liquidity. If that's the plan, then why are they talking about correspondent banking in relation to ISO 20022, guys? Here is another document by Deutsche Bank with SWIFT logo on it. And it says here, ISO 20022, improving the quality of correspondent banking. Excuse me? How does ISO 20022 improve the quality of correspondent banking? I thought ISO 20022 means XRP. Shouldn't you be saying ISO 20022 eradicating correspondent banking? That's what you should be saying instead. So why are you telling me it improves the quality of correspondent banking? Oh, because ISO 20022, when it goes live, is still going to be used by correspondent banks. Like I said, I'm not going to read the document. I'm just going to flick through them. The industry challenge towards ISO 20022 as a global, as a global payment standard. Now I'm going to flick through this document to a certain section that I wanted to show you guys. And it was a section about the NIBC. It's a bank coordinating ISO 20022 compliancy. What does it say here? Challenge one, different implementation timelines by correspondents. Each bank engaging in correspondent banking can independently define their own implementation time. The implementation time of what? Of, of implementing ISO 20022. So why is it talking about banks engaging in correspondent banking? use defining their own implementation implementation time isn't the idea that once you go iso 20022 you're not going to be engaging in correspondent banking anymore because that's what the xrp community is implying and okay yeah right here it says to accommodate this transition period nibc needs to be able to differentiate message formatting according to the correspondent bank specific requirements why do they need to differentiate their message formatting according to the correspondent bank specific requirements. Isn't the whole idea when they go ISO 20022, they're going to be using the DLT XRP L ledger and XRP enables banks to connect directly to each other without banks in the middle or without middlemen. So why would they still be talking about correspondent bank specific requirements? Because like I've told you a thousand times, ISO 20022 has nothing to do with XRP L or XRP so the impact of ISO 20022 on correspondent banks, the only impact it should have on correspondent banks is eradicating it. So what does it say? With the global migration to ISO 20022, one of the biggest challenges facing correspondent banks is, hand, is how to handle the migration. Why are correspondent banks migrating? They should be eradicated because we're using XRP. We don't need you anymore. Don't you understand correspondent banks? Why are you still trying to be relevant? Because the XRP community on YouTube has told me that ISO 20022 means XRP is going to be used. So why are you trying to handle the migration? Because it has nothing to do with you migrating correspondent banks. Here we have the full implementation of ISO 20022 by the European Central Bank. The Target 2 system is run by the European Central Bank. What does it say in this document in the overview? How will SWIFT's transaction manager support correspondent banks until they have migrated to ISO 20022? Why is SWIFT Transaction Manager supporting correspondent banks for? Because ISO 20022 means XRPL. So why are you supporting a old system when we are moving to XRPL when ISO 20022 goes live? So why are, they, why are you lying to us and telling us you're supporting correspondent banks? Oh, I get it. You're lying to us because you don't want us to know what you're doing. You're really going to switch it up in the end. So you're telling us you're going to be using correspondent banks. But come November, at the last hour, I get it. At the last hour, regs are going to be put into place. ISO 20022 is going to go live and XRP, XRP is going to be used and XRP is going to be five digits. And you're not really going to be using correspondent banks. You're just tricking us. But then, but then the XRP community is already aware of this trick they've already decoded your lies so you thought you would trick us but we are already onto you ain't we xrp community 
you see how stupid that sounds? I'm sorry, but I'm just, I'm trolling at the same time while I'm making this video because the stupidity is ridiculous at this stage. It's clear that correspondent banks are actually going to be used and not the XRP ledger when ISO 20022 goes live. Here's another document, Finestra. Is your firm prepared for ISO 20022 for swift correspondent banking? Mm? And then here's this paper, Global Networks of Money and Information at the Crossroads, Correspondent Banking and SWIFT. This was published on 17th of October, 2022. And the reason why this document is here is because I want to show you how correspondent banking works. So the flow of funds is concentrated in large banks. Large banks settle the payments between each other across borders by debiting and crediting their correspondent accounts. You see, correspondent banking works by a pre-funded liquidity status in the destination accounts. And once the message is received, all that happens on the settlement layer between the banks is a debiting and crediting of their correspondent accounts. Where does the liquidity come from? These accounts are pre-funded in anticipation, or oh, in advance, so liquidity is tied up, of making payments. So let me understand how this works then. Before a bank could make a payment, they have to pre-fund the destination accounts. Okay, so the message is sent first, and then the accounts are already pre-funded, and once the message is sent, the only thing that happens in the pre-funded accounts is just a debiting and crediting of the correspondent bank accounts. And how long does it take to debit and credit balances on, on the bank's ledger? Instantaneously. Oh, so ISO 20022 can still enable fast instantaneous payments via correspondent banking, despite them using pre-funded liquidity. Yes, it can. Because, I, because ISO 20022, as I've shown you through all of these documents, enhances and improves the payments between correspondent banks because it enhances and improves the messaging between the banks. And with improved messaging, faster messaging, it leads to faster payments because the money is already in their accounts to begin with. It's pre-funded in their accounts. How hard is this to understand? And oh, okay, and how is, it, how is it done? This is done in response to financial messages. Oh, so all those people that are talking about ISO 20022 messages has to use a DLT system because money has to be moved. No, it clearly tells you here, in response to a financial message, what happens in response to a financial message? The banks, which are already pre-funded in advance in anticipation of making the payments, once the financial message is done, in response to that message, debiting and crediting of accounts occurs. I've explained this in great detail in all of my videos talking about SWIFT. For goodness sake, people. For goodness sake. So to conclude, ISO 20022, when it goes live, it has nothing to do with XRP. ISO 20022 is going to be used alongside correspondent banking system. It, it enhances the correspondent banking system. And three, the correspondent banking system has a pre-funded liquidity setup. It does not use liquidity on demand. Correspondent banking is not DLT and it uses pre-funded liquidity to settle payments based upon the ISO 20022 message. And all that needs to be done is debiting and crediting of accounts. And that can be done instantly if the messaging layer is fast. I've explained all this in my series Please watch it if you genuinely want to understand how this stuff works. Or if you don't want to understand how this stuff works, then don't watch it. Just be an ignoramus and just believe that ISO 20022 means you're going to get rich in November. When it doesn't happen, believe ISO 20022 means you're going to get rich in March because XRPL is going to be used. When that doesn't happen, just listen to the YouTubers who continuously milk you for their ad revenue, for their donations, telling you, oh, it didn't happen in March. Maybe it's going to happen by 2025 and get milked until 2025. If, that's, if you want to be that guy continuously milked, then be that guy. Or if you want to be that guy that actually improves and enhances your knowledge and understanding of how this stuff works so that you can not rely on all these YouTubers telling you how it's supposed to work with their connecting the dots theory, then you're going to have to look at information that goes against your confirmation bias and be objective about it. Remove your emotions, be objective, watch the series and learn something. 
they've made this explicitly clear. How can all of you YouTubers ignore this? It makes no sense. And no one can actually challenge my research or refute it or do a video debunking it because you can't do it. It's impossible. You're going up against documentation from, from banking institutions telling you they are going to be using correspondent banking when ISO 20022 goes live. Oh, but no, we, we would ignore that and we would make up our own theories, joining dots together, saying that when ISO 20022 goes live, XRP is going to be used because ISO 20022 equals XRPL. And how do you know? Because I joined the dots. And what you'll find is that none of these YouTubers who tell you XRP is going to be used by banks in November when ISO 20022 goes live can show you where any of those banks even mention vaguely that they would be using DLT systems to facilitate payments between each other when ISO 20022 goes live. Just tell them to show you one document where when they say, oh, guess what? This bank is going to go live with ISO 20022 in November, the bank of so-and-so, the bank of so-and-so. And guess what? All the banks are going to be on ISO 20022 eventually. So when they tell you any bank is going to go live, okay, and they imply that that bank is going to be using DLT systems, just tell them to show you one document where that bank has said that they're upgrading their payment systems to DLT. One document, any bank that's going live with ISO 20022 in November, where is that document whereby that bank has said they're upgrading their payment system to DLT? I mean, I don't even want to see a document where the bank is saying that they're going to be using XRP. That's too explicit. Just a vague document where they're saying, we're going to be using DLT to facilitate payments. Show us one document. None of you can do it. However, I can show you guys document after document from bank after bank saying they will have pre-funded liquidity and use correspondent banking still. When ISO 20022 goes live and you all ignore it, you ignore all that information. You ignore information from legit documents. You ignore information from actual developers that are working in this space and you think you all know it all with your connecting the dots fooling people you're fooling your subscribers selling them the dream that they're all going to get rich in november and you know what i frankly i've had enough of it i've been dealing with this nonsense since september i figured it's all out back in september i understood this back in september and i'm seeing youtubers still to this day propagating that foolish nonsense garbage misinformation and yes, I've had enough of it. Shame on you guys. And like I've said, I've explained this all already. So let's just talk about DTI, Digital Token Identifier and ISO 20022, because that's what they use to say, oh, ISO 20022 has Digital Token Identifier and Digital Token Identifier enables tokens to be identified in the messaging layer. That therefore means that XRP is going to be used in the payment settlement layer. So yes, it's true. DTI enables ISO 20022 messages to add a token identification for a crypto in the messaging layer. However, there is no proof banks will be using this as soon as they go live with ISO 20022. It is simply just a feature that is there for the future for when or if banks decide to ever use a DLT system. They also have the ability to add tokens when and if they decide to ever use a DLT system, they have the ability to add tokens with their appropriate identification in their messages. And that's what DTI is all about. It gives the token an identification that's unique to that token, which can be incorporated into the messaging, messaging layer. However, if banks are not on a DLT system, DTI is useless. It only comes into play when a bank is on a DLT system. And there are no banks on DLT systems once ISO 20022 goes live. And if I'm wrong, prove it to me. Show me one single bank that's going live with ISO 20022 that has come out and said, we are not using correspondent banking. We are not using pre-funded liquidity. We are using DLT. Show me one bank that has come out and said they're using DLT when they go live with ISO 20022, be it November or March 2023. Show me one single bank. You can't show me any bank. All you can do is show me banks saying they're going live with ISO 20022 and then you conflate ISO 20022 to mean DLT systems, which is false. Because the reason why you can't show any of this is because it's not going to be used by any banks in November 2022. DLT is not going to be used by any banks. 
the digital token identifier is not going to be used by any banks. Why would they use a digital token identifier if they don't even if they're not even using DLT? The reason why this feature is available is because the idea is one day, hopefully, these banks are going to migrate onto a DLT system or leverage a DLT system or interface with a DLT system. And when they do, the DTI, the digital token identifier, is available for those banks to use. So here's a list of a few things. I actually did this post about a month ago to be, not a month ago, two months ago, back in September. And I did this post in my community section on YouTube. And it's basically a list of a few things that would likely need to happen if XRP will be utilized in November in the Eurozone, making you all rich. I did this post back in September. Look how look how far ahead I was in terms of understanding what needs to happen before XRP to be utilized, if it stands a chance to be utilized in November. And let's go through this list. Six points are made. Global regulations in relation to crypto and its utility would need to be crystal clear. Well, now what about the YouTubers that are telling you in, in a few days time, XRP is going to be used when ISO 20022 goes live? Where's the global regulations? Oh yeah, I forgot. It's going to happen at the last minute, right? Just one minute before midnight, global regulations are going to drop and then it's all going to be crystal clear and, and all the banks are going to jump onto DLT systems. Oh yeah, that's how it's going to work. That makes a lot of sense. Now, the second is the SEC case needs to be over. Now, this would only apply probably to America and financial institutions and banks in America. I don't think it applies to the rest of the world, really, because the U USA SEC is just based in on USA. It has no jurisdiction in other parts of the world. But I put it in there anyways, because a lot of these people talking about XRP is going to be used. OK, a lot of them are based in America and I'm not talking about any YouTuber specifically. Because to be honest, at this stage, there's so many of them. Some are also based in the UK. There's just literally loads of them that are coming out spewing this misinformation. It seems like on a daily basis now. So thirdly, are TGS systems in European banks and the cross-border countries they are transacting with would need to be upgraded to be DLT compatible or they would need to all agree on using the same DLT system? Think about this, guys. If you are saying... When ISO 20022 goes live, especially when they were saying it's going to happen in the Eurozone with Target, okay, which is an RTGS system. Now, if that's the case, then that RTGS system, you need to show me where Target is saying they're going to be using DLT or upgrading to DLT or interfacing with DLT. And also, the countries that they're interacting with, that they're sending payments to, okay, and Target sends a lot of payments worldwide, all those countries need to be using DLT as well. Because how can Target be using DLT for cross-border payments to a recipient that's not even using DLT? And don't tell me, oh, ISO 20022 is going live, that means DLT. Nope, ISO 20022 has nothing to do with DLT. The messaging layer has nothing to do with the settlement layer, the payment system. They're two different layers. So which countries on a mass scale in fact, which RTGS systems, which banks on a mass scale are coming out saying by November they are all using DLT? Show me the evidence. Nothing. Number four, CBDCs would need to be live. Now think about it. If they're going to be using a DLT system, the way to interact with a DLT system, you're going to have to tokenize your currency. So you're going to have to have a digital form of money and that is CBDCs. So CBDCs would need to be live out of pilot stage and launched in the Eurozone and the various countries that the Eurozone transacts with. So which CBDCs are live out of pilot by the 21st of November? Any CBDCs? Nope. Five, liquidity tied up in correspondent banking for cross-border payments will be unnecessary. Think about it. If they're going to be using Ripple, which eliminates the need to pre-fund destination accounts, then there would be no need for correspondent banking and there would no, be no need for liquidity tied up in correspondent banking. So this would be unnecessary. Also, making correspondent banking a useless mechanism. Correspondent banking would be useless if they're going to use XR, if they're going to be using XRPL. It would be useless to facilitate cross-border payments, so it would likely be disused. Now, that makes sense, right? Because why would you use XRPL whereby you have on-demand liquidity 
and then at the same time you're using another system that is the complete opposite to ODL. I'm just using common sense here. If they're going to be using XRPL, they're not going to be using correspondent banking. So why are they still telling us when ISO 20022 goes live, they are still going to be using correspondent banking? Why are they still telling us when ISO 20022 goes live, they're still going to be using pre-funded liquidity? Oh, but of course, let's ignore all that because that does not conform to your confirmation bias. So we're going to dismiss that and we're just going to say XRPL is going to be used and we're all going to get rich on Monday. Number six, XRP will need to be at a much higher price beforehand to provide liquidity. So if in a few days time, Monday, banks are going to be using XRP, surely XRP can't be at cents before they start using it, can it? Won't it wouldn't XRP need to be at a higher price? So when is XRP going to be at a higher price? We have five days. We have five days to see global regulations, not I think four days actually, global regulations, we have four days to see RTGS systems around the world becoming DLT compatible and banks that are going to be using XRP to become DLT compatible. We have four days to see CBDCs being rolled out. We have four days to see correspondent banking not being used and ISO and all those documents saying that they're going to be using ISO 20022 of correspondent banking to be basically made nullified because they're going to have to come out and produce new documents telling people, guess what, we're going to be using DLT systems instead for cross-border payments. We have four days and none of that has happened. And we also have four days to see XRP at a much higher price so that the banks can have liquidity on demand. Do you think they're going to have liquidity on demand of XRP at a few cents now, do you? Come on. It says here um, seven weeks to go before all of the, the above is done at least. Now, now we literally have a few days. But when I wrote this, we had seven weeks to get all this done and none of it has been done. None of it. And now guess what? We only have a few days and people are still saying ISO 2022 means XRP utility. And let's see which one will be done first. Which one of these of these points are going to be done first to prove that ISO to prove that XRP is going to be used in November coming? None of them, none of them. Because even if, okay, um, a DLT system is launched, we still need to have global regulations. We still need to have correspondent banking being scrubbed. We still need to have CBDCs being used. We still need to see XRP at a high price. And none of that has happened. And we have a few days before November the 21st. And guess what? Those banks are going to go live with ISO 20022. But nothing is going to happen because ISO 20022 has nothing to do with XRP utility. So to conclude, when ISO 20022 goes live by banks, on November 21st, nothing will happen in regard to XRP utility. I can say that with confidence without messing any of you around. I strongly suggest that people that are really serious about understanding this topic better to watch my series going back from September where I have consistently explained numerous topics and debunked all this misinformation in greater detail. I will leave the link to my series, the playlist pinned in the comment section of this video for people to watch. And to the YouTubers that are shamelessly spreading misinformation that you clearly do not care about correcting, shame on you, literally. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so as to not miss my next video.